Good morning, everybody. Come on in. We today are going to clean up our dendrobium so that they're all ready for spring. And uh, also, we are going to look at what's happening in the geraniums, in the terrarium, not geraniums, in the terrarium, and some exciting news of what is going to happen in the future. And uh, also uh, a garage sale find, our first garage sale of the year. So we're going to get at it. Maybe I'll start with the garage sale find. So I did wash it. It was filthy dirty. But I got this beautiful pot for $2. Now I love using these for uh, plants that I tip over. <laughs> and I'll often put an upside down bowl or I also collect these oh they used to use glass blocks for windows in some houses and one of them is ideal for the bottom so your plants not sitting in water and then in they go they cannot tip over it would be sitting a little higher than this and I keep this one in one in the window since it fell and had its injury and I have this bigger one that, although it doesn't go all the way, it's solid, it won't fall over, and any drainage is going to the bottom. So when, I, when they're out in the patio, I want to make sure they don't fall and don't get knocked over. So for $2, I'm sure I'll think of the perfect spot for this. And it's in really good shape for $2. It was filthy. There was, <laughs> Jack put some soap in there and put it in the sink and the soap thing came up this high and then kind of fell over because <laughs> there was spider webs and everything, but well worth the $2. So I was pretty happy with that was my big grass sale find. And um, let's first talk about the dendrobiums. Now, um, I only have two dendrobiums, and I'm not, um, like a specialist on dendrobiums, but I've had these two for a while, and they flower every year, and I'm going to tell you what I do. They are just in bark, that's all they're in, and, uh, I have found they like to drain, but, uh, they get watered once a week when my other orchids do, except come fall, come fall, I put them out in the greenhouse. As soon as the temperature is down to about the low 50s outside or in my patio where I keep them, then I move them to the top shelf in the greenhouse. Now, we keep our, our the highest our heat goes out there is 50. Except when the sun's shining, even in the winter, because of three layers of plastic plus the greenhouse, it warms up quickly in there. But they do still like lots of light in the winter, uh, but I quit watering them. So in the winter, the only time I water them is if I see the, the stalks try, starting to shrivel, I give them a dribble of water and... Uh, I keep an eye on them, and that's about the only time I water. But come spring, when I see little buds forming. Now, once I see buds forming, some people say, oh, if you bring them in the house, those buds will turn into cakeys. <laughs> well, they have for me. <laughs> so once you see little buds forming, then I bring them in, and then they show slow, they grow quicker because it's warmer in the house, and then we get our flowers. So um, now they have flowered. They don't last as long as the fells, which is four to five months for mine. Uh, but they did last two to three months. I didn't keep track. So then you have to think, what do you have to do now before spring? And come spring, when it's warm enough, they go out in the patio. It's a lot of light out there. They lock light, but they do not get direct light because we have a shade cloth on the top of the 
Salarium. So um, lots of light, and I probably water them twice a day in the summer. They can take a lot of water in the summer, and they're growing. So, and uh, when in the spring when I put them out, and a lot of people go by Halloween and Easter. So Easter you start feeding your higher nitrogen fertilizer, and Halloween you stop and you can start feeding the higher middle numbers. So that's just, it doesn't have to be exact, but that's just a, a common practice I hear a lot of. So um, I do not give them a lot of nitrogen. Once in a while, because the fowls are on a nitrogen fertilizer, but if you pump too much nitrogen into these, you will get cakeys. Now, in the early first months, you can give them some nitrogen, but after that, I don't give them any. I just give them a balanced fertilizer. So, uh, we'll get more into that when the time comes. So, last year they did get repotted, and they've done well. And last year, I, uh, because of where I have to keep them, they were hanging and getting in the way. So this is the cage I got at the Dollar Tree, and I picked up a bunch more. I have them hanging in the gazebo because they are so handy. So uh, these were two, and I just bent them to fit this pot, and then joined them together right here. So they got a nice curve, and they're joined together, and they did a really good job of keeping the stalks upright. So um, I'm happy with that, but because I had not any extras, this is a tomato cage on this one. And it's very solid because I wired it. And this is a, if you're short of pots, latex paint comes in plastic containers and that's what this has had and I've had that pot since I first started growing orchids and it was good for orchids and these like them too so uh, it, it wasn't as big and bushy as this one I think they'll be good in these pots for quite a while so um, now cleanup what I like to do about cleanup is um, I like to clip. I should uh, get you in a little closer here for a minute so that we can get a close up here. That's a little bit better. Okay, so I have put my uh, scissors and I use the gas flame from the gas stove so I've cleaned them and I have a little pair of pliers and I have a toothbrush, tweezers and uh, I have some q-tips if I need them. So I hate to spray mine but what you want to do is all this debris that is um, what did I do with them? Now I, I won't pick it all off while we're at here but all this, anything that's loose and dry, I like to pick off. Like in here, if it's stuck and still green, I leave it. But if it's loose, I like to take it off. Because even with the fells, when there's something like this from an old leaf, where the, the leaf had fell off, but it left that little. I like to take them off because anywhere that little bugs can harbor, I like to clean up. So I will go through, I'll remove anything that is loose and check for bugs too. So it requires the pliers, <laughs> tweezers, and uh, it's a good time to check underneath your leaves for, now if I find scale, I like these little pads from the Dollar Tree 
and uh, just a little water and you can wipe them off unless you got a real infestation uh, you could spray them with uh, your choice of spray <laughs> rubbing alcohol or um, but the other thing that I do is anywhere there is where flowers bloom the old stalk I cut them off and I take it off now I have to be careful not to injure the orchid but I take them off very close to the stalk so I don't leave them on and I take away all the dry old sheaths see there's another one I take that's where a flower was and I'll cut that off so um, there's another one in here, right in here. Let's see. So I'll just come in here and just make sure you don't damage the stalk because you don't want to do that. So all of these dried pieces I will be picking off because, um, because bugs might harbor. And once they go out on the patio, it's screened but there is a lot more chance out there of getting uh, all kinds of bugs flying around every time someone goes outside. So, and then I like to wipe all the little leaves just slightly and check for scale. Now, let's see, is that a little scale? It could be, it could be. Now, right in here. Right in there. Now let's see. We'll get a little cute and I'll put a little bit of water on it. And we'll see if that's what it is. If you catch them early, then you're better off. And it was, see? I caught it. And that's what I use. And even on your fells, be careful to watch on your fells um, the flowers. If you see little dark dots on your flowers on your fells, then I would be looking very closely because they might be uh, scale. Also, now that I found one on this, you check in a new leaf. And if you see something sticky, it's not necessarily happy sap. It could be the sign of bugs. So just go through and I always have my lucky little light <laughs> so all these will come off. Yeah, All that will be peeled off and then once you get most of it off you can brush it a bit with a toothbrush and make sure you've got all the little flakes like that. Yeah, it cleans up really nice. So that is a, you know, it's a nice rainy day job. And that's what it's doing today. It's raining. And uh, it's a good time to do that. And that's basically what I do. And make sure that your orchid still has growing room for new stalks, which these do because they were just repotted. So you want to make sure that you don't have to repot, that, that everything's good there. Now this one, I'm going to give you a real close-up, because remember this one fell out of the, off the top shelf in the living room window, and the bowl fell to the glass broke, this broke, because I didn't have it in a nice heavy bowl, and this stock from here up came right off. So I took a clamp and some tape and I put it on and it is on. I know it looks sad and it seems to be growing a little cakey because I can see why I see this is not a flower is because I see tiny little roots coming. So um, now I don't read, really want another <laughs> another plant, so 
I'm going to be taking this off because uh, it wants to do it, but I just want, I would like to see this just, you know, stay here and be nice. <laughs> it doesn't have to. Um, all this old stuff I'll take off. I don't know, seeing it, it, it took its time and it, and it joined. It, let me see. Well, so far it looks good, but it, I don't see anything. It is a little wiggly, and I'll be keeping my eye on it. So it's trying to form a baby. I might end up having to cut it off. Um, <laughs> let me know what you think. So I'm going to put that there for a minute, and I'll just back up a bit again. There we go. So now that is my agenda for a nice peaceful rainy day. <laughs> and uh, there. Um, now the terrarium. Oh, before I forget, I'm going to recommend two new videos I found. Now one his name is Wayne, and he's a little, um, what is he? Maybe eccentric, but he sounds like he really knows what he's talking about. He seems pretty, um, he, he's not someone that's going to brag. He's just going to tell you how to do what you need to do. And, but he seems like he's got a lot of knowledge. So, I did find his channel, and I'm going to put a link in the description, and it's Wayne's Weird World, and he's in Australia, and he has some humongous dendrobiums, and they are growing uh, naturally there in a lot of places, but uh, he's interesting. He doesn't have a lot of subscribers, but you know... <laughs> I've watched a few of his videos and, and I've learned things. So uh, he just says he wants, if he can teach, help you with something, that's all he wasn't want. That's all he wants. You know, he doesn't want any uh, trouble. <laughs> so uh, watch with lighthearted and learn. So anyway, I am going to recognize. Uh, and I also have another one, you know, I'm always looking if I see something new, and these were two new ones I found. And the other one I'll put a link below too. And it's one orchid a day, and it, she's uh, doing lots of videos. She's out of England and maybe London, I'm not sure. I'll put a link to her video. She's very knowledgeable. Uh, she came from somewhere where they actually grew orchids outside. <laughs> so, uh, you know, if, you, if you've got time and you feel like checking out those two channels, the links, the links will be down below. Uh, so, I like to share too. So now, the terrarium. Now, I have been very happy with this. And I still made a few changes, but it is left. Um, Jack and I, when we're having coffee, we, our lunch, we'll sit and we'll discuss and I'll say, gee, you know, these are doing really good with this new idea, how I've been doing. Now I'll show you that in a minute. And they have improved, but they're so crowded in there and I got to take the lid off. <laughs> And I said, I think I'll watch for, you know, a, a, an, an old aquarium or something. But then we kind of discussed that, and then you're reaching down into something. It could be a little awkward. <clears throat> so, it, Jack is very artistic, and we love to play, and, and our brainstorming grew and grew and grew. And we are going to go ahead, and he says, you know, I used to make fish tanks, and I'm pretty sure I can make you a terrarium. He says, so we talked about what we wanted and where we wanted it, so I'm just going to let you tell you the plan. We haven't ordered the glass, but it's going to be um, honeycomb shape. 
I don't know if that's the right word, but it's going to be like the pot that I put my uh, new penny, pennies, uh, Chinese lucky pennies in. So I'll show you that because we'll do an orchid tour after. And uh, what we're going to do and why, because I'm going to show you that. Well, we are going to, Jack is going to, we're going to order all the glass we need for the pieces. It's going to have a door on the front so that I can easily reach in. It will have a small computer fan. It will have a small light, a grow light. And it's going to sit over here, and it's going to be beautiful. Now, um, on Wayne's Weird World, <laughs> he has these, uh, he, I have a couple, like the things in the microwave that turn around, you can put a plant on, and he makes some real heavy-duty ones for his big plants. Well, Jack is also good at designing things, and he's seen this, and so... We're going to design this so that it can turn and he's going to put a, a button on it so I can just push a button when I want it to rotate. So it'll get light from all angles. It gets a lot of reflected light where it's going to be. It'll have a door in the front. We're going to keep track of sizes of glass and all the information as we go. So we have to order the glass, and that might be a while, but I'll let you know when we're all ready to go. But let me show you why. So, this little one is working. It's a little, it's fine for just one or two, unless that little bug grows. Oh, these orchids love this, and, you know, we start getting more minis. And I would think it, in an aquarium or a bigger area, it would be easier to look after. I am not putting anything, anything planted in there, basically. There may be some moss, and oh boy, it'll be fun. So first, I'll show you what I did do. Well, I had them just sitting in here, and they weren't that happy. So I did kind of, for now, uh, there's better things than rocks. I've been reading, so I have to start collecting. But as you can see, two roots coming. Now these weren't doing anything. You can see they were so dry. So they like about 70% humidity. So since being in there, it's got two nice green, green shoots coming and a new leaves. Now I think this is Fal Anasarcati something like that. Uh, the, the tags over there. So I'm thinking these are going to go all in there. Now I want you to see the one that was in the worst shape, Herella retrocella. Now she has, and I don't know if you can see it, but she does have green roots trying to come in here. It's very dry, but there is. Let's see if I can get. Um, where am I? Sometimes it, you want to get this just right. Now, there is little shoots. And I can see them in here. Tiny little roots coming. And that's the best this is doing. It is still not that well, but I do see shoots even deep inside. I want to see some new leaves, but uh, I think the new home will be better. So I have put them kind of on something that I can pick out and give them a little extra care. And this is what this was. And I also tied them down. And, what do I see? This one, there's, there's new shoots, and there's new roots. Very hard to see. There's new shoots coming in, and nice new green roots coming. They're definitely 
happier. It was just too dry in the house in the winter with the heater and and uh, so I've never had bees do anything and this is a new leaf right here. That's a new leaf. So and there's nice new green root here. So um, this the this is now this this is the plan of my oldest orchid because it had that long monopodial stem wouldn't fit in pots anymore and it took a shock when I cut it off and the piece I had cut off had no leaves and eventually it grew this poor little plant and I don't know if it's been a year or two nothing's happening it grew some leaves it's been slow but since it's been in there two nice new roots coming where am I two nice new roots get them I have to put my finger. Yeah, two nice new roots coming. Now that is a good sign. And a nice new little leaf. So I'm thinking that uh, this terrarium will be very useful. And I can put some of the other plants I have that really like that high humini. I can put them in there too. And uh, set them up where it's actually going to be less trouble. And in the bottom, all I have is a beaded glass beads, but I do have charcoal pieces in there because that stops the water from getting stinky from sitting or uh, anything. So I'm not putting anything heavy. I want to be able, when I want, just go in there, take things out, put them back. I'm not, I'm not going to make it difficult. And, Jack's going to plan it all, so I know it will be good. So, um, even this, it grows quite tall. So, it will probably do really good in there. And it will stay in a pot, or when it needs a bigger pot, it will get a bigger pot. Because it is awkward going down. Now, if I have a door, it's going to be easier. So, I'm going to take you on a tour of the windows and uh, show you what's happening. we still got beautiful flowers. And, oh yeah, I'm reading this really good book. Some people say, do I read? Well, I used to read a lot of novels, but it seems I'm always reading about orchids or something else. But I did watch YouTube videos on this fellow. And... I liked what I was hearing and I ordered the book and I like that too. So I just thought I'd share that with you. Now I'm going to take you on a tour. Okay. There we go. So. Yeah. I, I, I really need more room. <laughs> but there's the two little roots. Yeah. It just, they weren't doing anything, so, and the new little leaf. So, it's a good sign. And, uh, you can see way in there, you can see little roots and things happening. So, this is good, and I'm pleased. Sign with it, yeah. Okay, so let's do a tour. Let's go to the two in the north. These are our new windows, and they're in the north. And things are doing good. So I have one orchid here, just because it's so pretty. It has actually very big flowers. I love them, really. And the Militinopsis. They get a run-through of water on Sunday and a soak on Wednesdays and the Militasia. So they're doing good. Those were the new ones. And since I repotted my slipper orchid and had it higher, I've noticed it's it's starting to look better. And this is Alfinia who had a flower for ages. She was the free orchid from Roehampton. She has nice new roots and good growth coming. So 
that's good. And this is Fel Sheriana, and I got her on April 28th. And she is also doing good. Nice firm leaves, waiting for a new one. Now here's, I lost her tag, but she's the um, Peloric Orchid. She's got getting ready to bloom again. She has really good growth coming in here. Really good. So she's doing good. And over here is Fal Mini Mart, and I've also seen good root growth in here. An old root has just turned green and much chunkier looking. So, and of course, there's my big pot that my, um, this is a nice one. You want to look inside? There's fish inside. I got a couple like that with fish inside. So, that's what's happening in that window. So, I think things are going good. They seem to like that northern light that's starting to come. And... Here, the minis, they, they don't last in bloom so long, so they're out of bloom. And that's a newly potted new orchid that I want to improve. Oh, I overfilled my pond. It's lucky this is water safe. <laughs> so I overfilled this this morning. Yes. Hmm. You know this air plant, look how big it is. It's never flowered for me, but I, I just leave it sitting there in the side and seems quite happy. Okay, and then we have these, the fiddlehead, this is all new growth. And I also took this one out of the terrarium and put it here for now, but it'll probably go back in the terrarium. And, uh, you want to see inside here my rabbit's foot fern lots of lots of new green growth coming in there so that's good sometimes you see on the ones hanging down you start to see some nice green things too so and here we are with the Kella Kellathea <laughs> It's been doing good. It was just little when I brought it home last year. And this is the Kayla Lily, and I stuck it in glass. I'm not too sure if it's going to stay there. I'm trying to keep it wet, but I don't think it looks real happy. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with that. So um, let's head to the other room. I got some geraniums. I brought in from the greenhouse. So. And of course the old, old orchids I painted. <laughs> so, okay, and the ZZ plant. Yeah, it's growing, it's so shiny. So easy to look after. Lots of new shoots. These are new shoots, these paler colored ones. And these are my new plants. Now you see the shape of this pot. That's the shape our, our terrarium will be. And it will be sitting in here. It won't fit tightly. It'll have lots of room and it'll be able to spin. It'll get light from this window. It'll get light from the other side of the house. So, And then these like to be turned. So Chinese money plant, they like to be turned. And so that will be happening. So that should be interesting. So we still have orchids really doing well, holding their flowers, getting the odd new flowers. Some have lost an older first, the first ones that come out. Now I'm thinking of cutting this off and these were two new orchids that I put in here, and I'm thinking it might be better for this one that has, did struggle. I think it's going to do fine, though. Got, they're getting nice new roots, too, just to let it have a little more energy to growing leaves and roots. This one here, 
It's been amazing. Just beautiful. So that's what's happening in this window. Back up here. Okay. <laughs> okay, now this window. Okay, these two, they've lost some of their flowers that came out first, like this one's going to go soon. And I like to pick them off as they come. But... There is some still branching coming, signs of branching. So this is good. And even this one here is starting to branch. And, and uh, one of them already has branched once, so... They seem happy. So we are still got flowers. Here we are going into April from the end of December. So we are still doing good. This will be here all year. It just loves the hot sun. doesn't seem to bother it at all. So it will be getting hot sun. And I see the basket starting to thicken up and do good. So they've all got lots of roots and they're going to stay in there. And this is another tomato cage that I have my Hoya growing around. So it seems happy. So I guess that's it for today. Thanks for joining me and have some fun today. Bye for now.